Good morning, guys. Before we get on to the subject of estrogen, let's talk about nature. There is an order, there is a structure within nature that allows for harmony. That order and structure implies an element of control. Now let's consider humans. We now live in a sick society. Whose fault is that? Well, it's our fault. Because ego has got in between understanding and progress. So we seem hell-bent and determined to not only destroy our natural habitat, but also cause harm to our physical and psychological well-being. It's very peculiar. I've said this before. The further we travel away from nature, the worse our physical and psychological well-being. We live in concrete jungles. <coughs> Enough. Um, and we intentionally poison ourselves with artificial chemicals. Mm. We become chunky monkeys. We have lost the need to struggle to survive. Life has become far too easy. Testosterone levels are dropping. They're dropping because of us. Whether it be intentional poisoning, enough, or unintentional, because of the environment we live in. Sorry, there's another dog. Um, so levels are dropping. Now that is in part due to an excess of estrogen, endocrine disruptors, BPA, chunky monkeys. The aromatase enzyme is in adipose tissue. So the more chunky you are, the more estrogen you produce, and that has a negative feedback on the hypothalamus and pituitary, which suppresses the signals down to the testicles to produce testosterone. And then a vicious cycle ensues. Let's talk about excess. We are prone to excess and it will be our failing. It's disturbing. We expose ourselves to way too much artificial stress. Now, if we think about pregnenolone, which is considered the father hormone, that cascades down to cortisol, the stress enzyme, aldosterone, and testosterone. So if you are cortisol dominant, you will have a relative decrease in aldosterone and testosterone. So it makes sense not to be cortisol dominant. So what should you can do? You should control your level of stress so that balance and harmony can be restored. So, what else? Estrogen is incredibly important for mood, libido, bone strength, cardiovascular health, spermatogenesis to name a few it works through paracrine and endocrine mechanisms and its importance cannot be overemphasized now being prone to excess we're numpties but what we should realize is that we need balance our bodies work extremely hard to maintain a constant internal environment despite external changes. Now this is called homeostasis. It's complicated, very complicated. And we, still, we seem hell-bent on messing it up. Now take into consideration this need for balance and then understand that there are contrasting elements to our bodies. 
the nervous system, sympathetic fight or flight, parasympathetic rest relaxation, anabolic growth and repair, catabolic cortisol dominant daytime active. So your body has to not only fight against external changes, it has to accommodate the fact that we need these different processes. So it does that through control. So what we should be trying to achieve is a healthy ratio of testosterone to estrogen to DHT to allow the body to do what it needs to do. And that is hopefully achieve balance. What happens when we have an excess of estrogen compared to testosterone and DHT? Well, the cardinal symptom is anxiety. Second most common is water retention because of blood pressure. Third, bloating. And then fourth, gynecomastia. Now, gynecomastia is because of an estrogen to testosterone imbalance. This is well recognised in the literature and anybody telling you otherwise is a complete plonker. Now it's more complicated than that. There are receptors for progesterone and IGF-1 and prolactin within the breast tissue. So it is complicated, but estrogen causes breast tissue development. Just take somebody wanting to change from Stanley to Loretta. What hormone do they give them? Estrogen. What hormone do they suppress? Testosterone. So it's the abnormal estrogen to testosterone ratio that causes breast tissue development in people transitioning. We have a propensity to excess aromatization. Why? For the reasons discussed. Plastics, cattle pumped full of estrogen to make them continue lactating milk so that we can have our porridge in the morning. Chunky monkeys, all sorts. Now consider the liver. The liver detoxifies everything. And what do we do? We expose it to chemicals, we expose it to alcohol, which increases our propensity to aromatization. An overactive thyroid. There's, there's lots of causes of an excess estrogen compared to testosterone. Because it would make sense that if you create testosterone, then there'll be an appropriate amount of conversion of estrogen and DHT. But we are so far removed from nature we are incredibly unhealthy. And whose fault is it? It's our fault. Scary, isn't it? So, controlling estrogen. How should you correct this ratio of testosterone to estrogen to DHT? The first thing to do is look at your lifestyle. So weight management. We should not be chunky monkeys. Just imagine in nature if a predator was fat. It wouldn't be able to catch its prey. Just imagine if the prey was fat. The predator would pick that one off first. So we should not be fat. We are fat as a society. It's disgusting. So... The one thing that you can do, the most important thing that you can do to not only improve your estrogen level or decrease your estrogen level or propensity to aromatization, uh, it's also going to help other health parameters. So maintain a healthy weight. Number two, look at your liver health. Stop polluting it with artificial chemicals. Stop polluting it with alcohol. Damn you, alcohol, you're good fun. But you have a negative impact on health. 
pretty much everything. Alcohol is poison, which is bloody disappointing because I do like a bit of gin. Um, but it is liquid poison, which is disappointing. So when everybody gets on TRT, it's, they think they consider it as a magic pill. And they say, well, I don't need to worry about anything else. But you, you must address every aspect of your lifestyle, your nutrition, and your physical exercise. This is 100% integral to actually feeling the benefits of testosterone replacement therapy. It's a peculiarity of our psyche that if you find a problem, you fixate on the problem and you lose sight of other aspects. Again, it comes back to recognition of the importance of balance and harmony and adopting a holistic approach to health. You have to work on health constantly. Constantly. There is no destination. It is a journey. Um, so, yeah, it's incredibly important. Estrogen. It needs to be the correct ratio of estrogen to testosterone to dihydrotestosterone. This is integral. Oh, it's exhausting. The internet is full of bozos, full of dogma. You cannot have a dogma applied to the body. You cannot have a dogma applied to medical practice. There is no one size fits all methodology. We are all biologically unique. So what do we do if you're struggling and despite weight management and uh, optimizing your liver health and thyroid function and all the other health parameters that you should be addressing anyway. Well, we microdose examastain. Examastain is a suicidal aromatase inhibitor. Again, you will listen on the internet and you will be misdirected by people promoting dogma. Now, the negatives of aromatase inhibitors come from inappropriate prescribing. Those negatives are due to suppression of your estrogen. Ergo, you are going to have issues with bone mineral density. Your cardiovascular health is going to be compromised. Spermatogenesis is going to be compromised. And your mood, erections, all of, all of the benefits of estrogen will be compromised. You do not want that to happen. So what should you do? You should control estrogen, carefully titrate the dose according to effect. Our average dose of examastain is 1.6 milligrams per day so it's 6.25 milligrams every four days because the tablets are 25 milligrams we've now arranged with a compounding pharmacy to produce one milligram capsules of examastain for tight control of estrogen can you have too much estrogen? Of course you can have too much estrogen. We've discussed the reasons why estrogen control is integral to optimal health. When we control estrogen, often guys' anxieties just melts away. It's incredible. I know when my guys have got high estrogen because they're whiny little bitches. <laughs> Honestly, the psychological impact of excess estrogen is, is clear to see when you are actually a doctor and you are exposed to reality. Now, the internet's a very peculiar place. You've got the proponents of um, high estrogen, whacking up your dose, um, and I feel amazing. And then the next post is, how do you deal with your anxiety? 
Well, I don't have anxiety because I've got my issue under control. <laughs> um, you have to have a common sense, logical approach to how you manage patients with testosterone deficiency and you start them on testosterone replacement therapy. It is an involved process. It's incredibly complex. It needs close monitoring. So our guys all have a thorough history, physical examination, appropriate investigations. Uh, they all go on our body scanner and they are followed up regularly to make sure that their levels are carefully titrated according to effect because we want to make sure that that ratio of testosterone to estrogen to DHT is optimal for health. We're all prone to a bit of excess. Excess is fun, but you must appreciate the need for balance for long-term physical and psychological well-being. Namaste.